What's going on, Junkie Nation? Gorgeous George and Goes are back with another superstar from the world of combat sports. Today we get to talk to our good friend James Vick, former UFC veteran. Now he's going to be competing at Karate Combat KC 36. It takes place October 29th. That's it, Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 Pacific. Go to karate.com for more information. What is going on, James? How are you? What's up, guys? I'm doing good. Uh, good, good to see you guys again. You too. Man, you're perfect for that pit. You know, 6'3 frame, long legs. Oh, man, like uh, th there's not really too many spots where homeboy can hide from you, right? No, no, I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm ready and I'm excited. Yeah, and I was kind of reading a few things, you know, on recent comments that you've made or whatever. What was it about the pit? It seems like the pit really drew you when you went to take in an event and, you know, maybe scout out, I guess, uh, the, the, the future spot of where you were going to compete at Universal Studios? Well, one, one of my main reasons was because I love karate. You know, I started doing karate about five or six years ago, and I already had a couple years of Taekwondo before that, and I really fell in love with traditional martial arts. And um, it became, you know, pretty much my favorite uh, uh, combat sport that I, that I practice in uh do on a regular basis and then uh back in june i went and cornered my sensei for for his fight there and it, the atmosphere was amazing it was um it was probably one of the best productions i've ever seen with the lighting and the graphics and everything and it was i mean it was amazing and it was small closed off studio in the back of uh universal studios in orlando and it was just amazing and i thought man i really would love to do this um uh and uh and then I've been talking to Adam Kovac, the, the president and stuff, and then we, we came to a, a little deal here. So now here we are. It does have a little bit of a maybe maybe not as a dark as blood sport, but, you know, I'm talking about the, the closed atmosphere with people, you know, they're foaming at the mouth. They want the action. They want the violence. And then a little bit of Karate Kid, you know, so people are there. They know the rules. They're excited. But I got to admit that that does look pretty cool. The production is top notch. And I don't know. Um, I, I know another one of the comments is it almost does feel like a street fight because you have people kind of like cheering for you. So, so close, even though, of course, we know it's not. It's professional prize fighting. Yeah, for sure. And, I'm, uh, you know, I grew up watching Bloodsport and Lionheart and all these movies like this where they basically fought on the open like that. And um, I, I do think it's going to feel somewhat like that when I get in there. And the last time I, when I when I went out there to, to help my sensei, I got inside the pit and I moved around and everything. And it, it's definitely a different experience. And I've never been to a live event where you could see everything so clear. Um, so it does have a street street fight feel to it as well, along with, the you know, the, the martial arts. Um, uh, because I've, I've never been able to see everything so clear and out in the open like that. And if you're, uh, if you're there in the venue, it's a very, um, unique experience because there's just, uh, there's no rings, there's no ropes, there's no cage. And it's just very wide open. And no matter where you're at, you can see, um, and get a phenomenal view. And it's just, it was a pretty amazing experience and, uh, I'm excited. Um, I think it's, uh, this is a new beginning and I'm very, I'm very happy to be here. Have you talked to anybody that's either already competed or were you in the pit long enough that you're able to kind of familiarize yourself and see where the, your strong parts are going to be within the pit? You know, the little nooks and crannies or whatever you want to call it, certain little spots that you think are to your advantage when you take on Jorge Perez. Well, I think I think part of it is I think the main thing is with the pit walls. Um, people do get pushed back on them. And sometimes that that. Uh, causes problems for guys and i think a lot of it is because they're not uh, as experienced with takedowns and the grappling and you can do um you know a lot of judo and a lot of foot sweeps and um even you know some greco-roman and, and uh, wrestling and body locks and stuff are, are legal and i think the pit you know the pit walls play a factor on that when you get backed up there you can't really um you kind of have to you may you know have to be on your back for a second and um uh so I, you know, I, my, like I said, my sensei fought there. Um, and then I got in there and moved around. I, I think that, um, that's not going to be a major factor for me just because I'm so good at grappling that I, and it's only five second takedowns and five second ground to pound. And I, I don't think that, you know, that I'm going to have a problem dealing with someone, you know, even if I get pushed back on the wall, dealing with someone for five seconds on the ground, you know, I, I think five seconds is not enough time to, to really do anything. And, um, uh, 
uh, I think I'm going to be just fine. James, I want to talk a little bit about the preparation for an event like this. Um, we're so used to watching you compete in mixed martial arts. If somebody were to prepare against you, would there be anything they could take from going back and watching your mixed martial arts fights? Or is this just such a completely different beast? Like what, what would be the preparation be like for something like this? Because in mixed martial arts, there's a couple fights you can go back and look on each other. And, and even the most obscure fighter usually has a couple here and there, but here there's not too much to look at for your opponent. What, what's the difference here in preparation? Um, I think, uh, Honestly, I don't think it's any different as far as the preparation. And I think my opponent's um, uh, game plan is going to be the same as all my guys. You know, I've had lapses in my defense. I've had I've had defensive problems, and I've worked my defense religiously over the last year. And I've had, you know, several boxing fights, you know, and I've worked a lot of, you know, boxing defense. And I, I don't think this guy's going to be landing a bunch of – I do think he's going to try quite a few kicks on me. He is, you know, he's a two-time Pan American champion. Um, he has, you know, he has real karate and, and high level technique, but, um, I think that he's just going to come swinging wild. Like, you know, like he has did in his, his previous fights. And, um, uh, I've worked my defense religiously and I, I'm prepared. Um, I think that anybody I compete against in the, in this pit is going to, you know, um, come at me the same way the MMA guys did as well. It's, it's really hard to win a point battle against me, even though, you know, they're point fighters like, to win a full decision, uh, win a decision against me. I've hardly ever lost decisions. Um, so he's going to come wild swinging, you know, trying to land a big shot, just like any other opponent in MMA has in the past as well. You know, we're MMA junkie, but we find ourselves covering other things more as of late. Like even they're bringing up the slap fighting, right? There's a lot of jujitsu tournaments going on that, that are very high level, there's Jake Paul, what he's doing in boxing and just regular boxing, pro wrestling. There's so much out there. Um, I know you're a martial artist, but is is your love going back? Like, is, would you say your love is uh, MMA still? Or have you kind of like found an interest in some of this other stuff? Because you did do boxing as well. Yeah, um, uh, I mean, I just love, I love competition, period. Um, it doesn't matter if, uh, uh, um. I've had some injuries where I couldn't grapple as much as I want to. So that's why at this moment I have no interest in MMA, to be honest with you. Um, uh, because, um, I've had some injuries for, from grappling that, that, you know, that just happens over the years of doing jujitsu and uh, wrestling. Um, but I, I just love competition you know, I've been a competitor my whole life and, um, it's not just a switch you can cut off, you know, um, uh, it's almost like, you know, Apollo Creed says on Rocky, you know, you can't just turn the switch off and, and, um, you know, I get a lot of criticism, you know, and for being knocked out in the past, but I'm perfectly healthy. Um, I've had three fights this year, no problems at all. Um, I, I was clear. I'm being being cleared to fight. Um, I have no issues. I'm perfectly healthy, and um, uh, I just want to compete. You know, I'm um, I'm 35 years old. I'm still young enough to compete. This is three three minute rounds. I went from I went from fighting five minute rounds my whole career, and I had better cardio than most people I fought, even when I fought five minute rounds. So I know that that for three minute rounds, I'm going to be just fine, and I, I believe I'm going to have a cardio edge over a lot of guys um, with with this. Um, only fighting three minute rounds, I, I can keep a pretty heavy pace. Just got to maintain my defense. And um, uh, I just want to compete, you know, uh, while I can still do this. I don't want to be 45, you know, saying, oh, I'm going to come back. I, I want to do it right now. You know, I never had to worry about that with you because I knew you'd be getting your testing and all that. You're always ahead of the curb in a lot of things, even in business, you know, uh, during your UFC run, doing other things outside of mixed martial arts. Um, so I never worried about that, but I do want to ask you about one little period. And that's when you retired from mixed martial arts, what was it like to not have combat sports for a, a small amount of time? I know you like to do things like hunting and stuff like that, but, uh, what was it like kind of disconnecting? What, what was your life like? I was, I mean, it, it sucked a little bit. Uh, it wasn't, uh, I mean, I had fun, you know, I was going fishing and hunting and, and, you know, stuff like that, but, um, uh, I just, I, I can't go out like this. You know, a lot of people, like I said, people will, will talk trash and say, oh, you shouldn't fight this and that. I mean, at the end of the day, I would rather, you know, um, my, my mindset is this, you know, I'd rather die on my feet than live on my knees. You know, I've never lost this much of anything in my life and I'm not fixing to just go out losing a bunch of fights and I have to live the rest of my life like this. And I know I'm healthy. I know I'm hundred percent healthy. I've all my CT scans have been negative. Anytime I've ever been, got caught and got knocked out. Um, I've never had concussed symptoms after any fights. Um, I'm perfectly healthy. Um, uh, 
and uh, I'm ready to go. And, um, you know, it's uh, while I can still do this, I want to do it. It's that simple. Why, you know, at some point, you know, at, at Father Time gets you and, and it hadn't got me yet. And I'm, I'm still going to I want to compete. And uh, so it was fun. And I guess what I can hunt when I'm older, I can hunt as much as I want to. Uh, but right now I, I want to compete while I can. James, so I know you have a love for karate. So this question comes from left field. But let's see if you uh, can humor me here. Is your style, you know, your inner being, what's in here, is it more Miyagi-Do, Cobra Kai, or Eagle Fang? <laughs> um, uh, a mixture, a mixture. Um, uh, I honestly, you know, I'm a counter puncher. I've been a counter puncher my, my whole career. So that's kind of more Miyagi though, I guess, moving around and, you know, uh, uh, letting them attack and then you counter. Um, uh, but, uh, but, you know, since I've, I've really worked my defense religiously the last couple of years and I've worked and I have my boxing coach, Kendrick uh, Rutherford, who's, who, you know, is very world-class and I'm a uh, very high level coach. And um, now that I have, you know, I feel way more comfortable with my defense um, and I feel like I've got around the right people to help me. Um, I, I am more of a, I am pressuring a little more than I used to. So, um, maybe I got a little bit of both in me, uh, but mostly probably Miyagi though at the, at this point. Yeah, that's true. The minute you, the minute you did say Miyagi though in the countering, I was like, okay, he, he knows what I'm talking about. And I thought that was spot on. Um, what's yeah. funny is I don't watch TV at all, but the, I, I literally don't watch TV at all, except that in the last three years, I think that's the only TV series I've ever, I've watched in the last three years is, is Cobra Kai. <laughs> Did you catch the most recent season five that just dropped a few months ago? I'm like halfway through with it. I'm halfway through with that one. Okay. All right. But after I, this fight, I'm going to, I'm going to go back and binge the rest of it for, for, for the week. Probably. I thought you were going to say maybe Eagle Fang because you kind of strike me a little bit of like the type of guy that would hang out with a John Lawrence. <laughs> Daniel I probably would hang out with him better. He likes girls. Uh, he likes getting, <laughs> getting, getting women. So I probably would hang out with him more, but, uh, uh, He's a little reckless, so I'm probably going to go with the counter puncher. <laughs> gotcha. Well, um, listen, it's always great to see you. I don't know if this happens to you, but, you know, right around the time where the holidays come, because we went on that trip together to visit the military, you get those little memory things, you know, through, I don't know if you're an Apple user or, or Google, if they do the same thing. But I'll I got see one popped up the other day. Yeah. I got one popped up the other day. When you're holding that big, what is it? Uh, the 50 cal, I think. That's like one of my favorite pictures from all the trips that we've ever done. You're, you're front and center. You were the biggest guy there. We're like, okay, let, let Vic hold this bad boy. But I, I, that's one of my favorite pictures. It always puts a smile on my face. That was an amazing experience. I appreciate that, guys. And I still work with um, uh, military veterans groups, and I go hunting with them. Uh, I work with a big one here in um, in Texas called Hero Sports, and we take veterans hunting and stuff. And um, uh it's an amazing experience and I, I definitely love and support the military and I, I will cherish that, that trip with y'all, with you guys and uh, Uriah Faber and Art Davey, you know, it was, it was an amazing trip for sure. It was, it was a good cast of characters. All of us, you know, just, uh, different generations. If you think about it, yeah, you know, Jen, Jen's, a, Jen's was supposed to come up and go, go, uh, hunting uh, with me before, but he, mm -hmm. but he hasn't been able to make it up. He lives here in Texas now, actually. Oh, does he really? Uh, yes, sir. Oh, nice. Cool. All right. Well, late. We'll let, we'll let you focus. It, it is fight week. We'll let you focus on the fight. We appreciate you breaking away, giving us some time here on MMA Junkie Radio. And uh, good luck, man. We'll be tuning in to KC36 on Saturday, October 29th, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Go to karate.com for all your information. It's James Vick versus Jorge Perez. Thanks, James, for the time. Thank you, guys. And thank you for all the support over the years. I really appreciate you guys. We appreciate you. you too, brother. Take care.